Okay, so just felt like doing a blab, talking to you guys. And uh, it all came just because I was thinking, like I usually do, and my son happens to be sleeping for uh, his nap, and hopefully he'll stay asleep for this. And I wanted to talk about kind of a follow-up to the making six figures as a physical therapist as to how you can just simply get paid more. Uh, and there's a couple of, you know, areas of thought, you know, how to get paid more individually as a professional, how to get paid more as a business, and then how to get paid more as a profession. Uh, and I wanted to read a couple just uh, tweet responses that I already received. And I their own industries, uh, they are the content experts for whatever concerns that a client patient has. And, you know, lawyers charge for their time. It's not negotiable, right? There's no declining payment schema. It is, look, you're going to pay me X amount per hour, and that's how it's going to work. Or you're going to pay me X amount per retainment, and that's how it's going to work. Uh, Monique Carruth, you know, knowing our value, sticking to it, instead of letting somebody else define that value, very similar to what Sandy had to say, you know, we need to set where our market value is, not someone else. Um, and of course, marketing better, um, finding market need and niche. A couple more. Let's see. So, uh, you know, I think as you know, as a business and as an industry, those are really good strategies. You know, to Really, yeah, you know, using the differentiator strategy uh, and the value added strategy. Um, and that's a really good way to go in uh, healthcare because a lot of places are still stuck in the cost containment uh, strategy. You know, we cost the least. Now, somebody's always willing to do it for cheaper, but cheaper isn't always better. Many times, cheaper is not. So, uh, outside of how we elevate the profession, which is a huge topic, probably beyond what, you know, I'm even ready to talk about right now. Um, is how to do this individually and kind of in the microeconomics of it. Uh, it just it, it irks me every single time I think about how much new graduate and fresh PTs are paid, say, you know, three years and under of experience. Uh, and it's not how much, it's how little, right? Um, I remember, you know, when I started, you know, considered like, well, that's a good new grad rate. I think right now, probably mid 30s, 35, probably 33 in the lower areas if you're at a, uh, if you live in a state or an area that has a lower um, cost of living, uh, maybe 37s uh, or so if you're in a area or state with a, a higher standard of living uh, and the cost of living rather. And I mean, that's that's OK. But, you know, when our, our median uh, pay scheme is supposed to be in like the 80,000s or so, you're kind of wondering and scratching your head. How are all these new graduates and all these people coming out with one of the toughest doctorates out there? And it's tough. You know, I've had medical students and physicians, you know, kind of remark while I was, you know, getting my DPT on how fast paced that coursework is, how in depth it is. Uh, you know, a lot of people kind of uh, at the time and, and probably even now still, they took a look at the DPT and go, oh, it's just kind of, it's a soft doctorate. You know, until it was uh, recently mentioned, I think last year, as one of the top 10 most legit doctorates out there, you know, just shy of the MD and the PhD. So it's being recognized, and, the, and if people aren't recognizing it, they're just behind the times. So how do we get paid more? You know, how, how do we, as say, just as an individual, get paid more as a physical therapist? Because we have to kind of go back to just business practices, right? If a physical therapist is rendering a service, they can earn a certain amount. So for a, say, 40-hour work a week, PT and outpatient, uh, on the average, they can bring in about a quarter million dollars of revenue. So somewhere between the, you know, the break-even cost of living and quarter million is what a business is going to be willing to pay. Now, typically, you get paid a little less in uh, outpatient areas because that's the cool place to work, right? It's it's comfy. You we don't have to work weekends. Um, you don't have to deal with this kind of the, the the dirt and grime of say uh, skilled nursing or of acute care. Uh, it's uh, attractive. And so if there's more applicants, of course, the payment will go down. And vice versa with, say, home health and rural areas where people are on the road for, say, five, six hours a day, uh, seeing caseloads of, say, 35, 40, 45 plus uh, a week, uh, the, these clinicians will be paid a lot more because that job market is a little bit more sparse. Businesses have to up their compensation package, be it in the dollar amount or in the benefits from the fringe, in order to attract people. 
And so you have that natural progression. But I think it actually starts with the supply side of the job market, right? Because come 2016, you know, Forbes has mentioned that it's going to be basically impossible to fill physical therapist uh, positions, uh, probably primarily in home health and probably also in, uh, you know, LTAX and SNFs. I think outpatient hospitals will always be very popular because that's where we find, uh, and of course, uh, you know, uh, inpatient rehab, acute rehab. Those are like the cool, jazzy places to be. It's it's hip. You get to do all these things that you've learned, uh, and it's less about um, it's less about the uh, you know, it, actually, rather, it's more about what the clinician gets to offer, right? You get to practice all these cool things, the manual therapy, the NDT, the PNF, all this stuff. Uh, whereas home health and SNF, it's kind of a basic life functions, but that's kind of what people need most. I think that the, the problem has come this way, where new grads don't really know how to negotiate up a salary. And they're unwilling to, right? We're, we just want a job. We have all this debt. We have the lowest paying doctorate out there we need to start paying back some of this debt we have. So we start to accept just anything, you know, um, you know, here, you're gonna get paid $30 an hour. And the response is a negotiable, no. Uh, okay, I guess I'll work, I'll work right now before you lose that, that po possible position, that opportunity. But if you span this across just this entire schema of all these new grads out there, what we're doing is we're lowering our individual and collective value by the hour. If we're more determined, and it also requires some, you know, some disruptive man some managers that really care about the profession, really care about the colleagues that are willing to fight on this behalf uh, and find the balance point between what corporate wants, which is to pay as little as possible, right? Work for free would be best. Uh, and what is needed as an organizational culture and as a professional culture. Because if, if you imagine just in mass, just in a certain area, uh, say there's like two or three PT schools, and there's a couple major hospitals, and there's you know a litany of clinics and SNFs and home health agencies. And what you have is a staffing agent, you know, staffing problem come next year. And if new grads and fresh grads are starting to change jobs and they want better pay, and they don't settle for the first number they're offered, all of a sudden our value's up, and the entire job market uh, value has to go up, right? Just by microeconomic behaviors. And managers are going to realize, wow, I, I can't lowball these new grads the same way anymore. Like they, they're just not going for it. The trick isn't working, right? The Jedi mind trick just isn't working anymore. What then happens is people are going to have to start from the business side, uh, upping these compensation packages, whether it's going to be a value-added value added compensation package or just better by the hour or better by the service. Something has to change. Otherwise, they'll be understaffed. And if they're understaffed, they're going to have to hire staffing uh, agencies for contracts and and uh, per diem work, which is way more expensive. And just to give you a taste of it, uh, I would say probably sixty-five to seventy-five dollars an hour is what it costs a business to take on a uh, staffing agency provided PT, right? And then the staffing agency gets a cut of it, and then the uh, the person, you know, the temp PT gets the rest of the money. But that's a lot. And yeah, they don't have to pay for benefits and, and a lot of these other you know, tax concerns, but uh, that's a big hit when you're talking about contracting out for six, eight, 12, 13, 16 week contracts. Um, even just seasonally, which almost turns out to be the same. You know, when I was a director, there were seasonal times where it actually made more sense to um, just use these contract therapists because the amount of training involved and, and the human resource uh, development involved was just too much. So when it all goes back to um, you know getting paid more individually, I think we have to work as a group a little bit. Now the second strategy is you know if we can't do that, which we probably don't have the um, the market power to do so from the supply side right now, it's just to start quitting your jobs. Right? There was a cool article in four January of last year, um, you know, stating that. Uh, people that stay at their jobs for two years or more actually gain or stand to lose 50% increase in terms of your bump in wages. Uh, I can guarantee you that from personal experience uh, and from the experience of others, that is absolutely true. Because if you get hired in you know, and you're lowball that say you know $30 an hour, even $35 an hour, and your your average increase, uh, you know your merit increase annually is say three, four, five, or even six percent if you're really really lucky. It's going to take you a long time to get to $40 an hour. 
Whereas if you work in a place for two years, you're now experienced and you jump over to some other place with a high market demand and they go, yeah, no, we need somebody now, $40 an hour. Now, all of a sudden, to all future hiring managers, you are worth And if you repeat that very quickly, you'll find yourself at 45, 48, 50, or even more. Um, and I can tell you just for me, my, my last clinical PT job before I decided to go onto this uh, entrepreneurial uh, lifestyle, you know, I was getting paid a six figure rate because of multiple changes, strategic changes. You don't just you know, quit willy nilly, but you know, strategic changes at the right time in your career path to get paid more sequentially. And it is different than the classical way of staying at a job forever. You know, it's, it's the Gen X and the millennial way, right? Things need to be a little bit more fluid and flexible. So by strategically changing your job, you can get paid a lot more as a physical therapist. Um, and especially if you diversify your compensation portfolio. So you don't have to stick with the same job for the benefits. You can reduce your time and full-time equivalents if that's something that that company is willing to do. Or you cannot. You can you know, contract out as a, you know, per, like a regular per diem status just for the cash, given that now we have the healthcare exchange and you can get benefits that way. You can create your own retirement portfolio with uh, you know, the increased revenue earnings that you have. So it was just a little thing that I wanted to get out there. We don't need to settle because if we settle on this back end, what do you think is the waterfall effect you know, all the way to the, the insurance companies? Right. The, there's a certain level of, of price and cost transparency in human resources. And, you know, if if companies know we're willing to pay or the market's only will, willing to pay so much, they're going to be willing to pay us even less. Right. And then so goes the negative cascade and shrinking margins. And then everybody has to settle for that new uh, you know, value or perceived value of the, the job market. Whereas, you know, if we change the scheme a little bit as a culture, you know, as a, as a PT culture, we can start to really hone in on what makes us valuable rather than just the hour of pay, right? What do we attribute? Uh, there was a big discussion uh, I had a while back with a bunch of uh, acute PT nerds like myself, and we're saying, you know, what does productivity really matter in the hospital? Because the way a department is reimbursed is by having a chunk of DRG revenue. So if we get a piece of the pie per admission, then really we should get paid for how we contribute to that mission rather than just kind of this global overarching, this is the money, this is your budget and everybody has to get divvied up that way. And moreover than that, just as PTs, you know, like how much, how much value is there in four units for uh, eval and treat in a gen med floor versus in ICU or ortho or spine or trauma uh, or even the emergency department, right? There's different, there's different weighted values really in how it affects things you know in the, the immediacy of the supply chain as well as downstream when it comes to admissions uh, i mean readmissions sorry and, and the general uh burden economic burden of, uh, regarding the health care of each case that comes by right so that that too needs to be revisited uh, even uh i think home health is doing it the best where it's profit sharing if a therapist goes out Evaluates a patient, does a start of care, the Oasis, they get paid a lot more because there's a lot more that has to do with getting that patient in, the subsequent treatments and uh, the value added there. And so each time uh, there's a visit, a PT shares a bit of that profit with the company. I think you can easily translate that out to outpatient practices where it becomes kind of like a, a commission shared earnings type model. The SNF will be a little bit different because of all the various uh, types of payers and the model payment, but there's still ways to do that uh, just by weighted at, at value. And yeah, it might be a little bit um, subjective, uh, but at least there's going to be a system involved where we're talking about paying people for what they add rather than paying people for the fact that they're just doing the job. So a uh, bit of a rant, just some thoughts and, uh, you know, hope you enjoyed it. But really, I think that there needs to be a lot of thought about, you know, at least on, on the person by person, professional by prof professional side, we need to stop devaluating ourselves just as individuals. Because if we're doing it as, as individuals, there's no way we're, we're unified enough to present this, you know, to the marketplace as a business or even as a profession at large, right? There's no way until we have a, a, a cultivation of individuals who believe 
in what they do, in the value of what they bring uh, and their skill sets and, and how it plays into this ecosystem, all you're going to get is this lowest bidder syndrome. And, you know, yeah, there's some, some little shortcuts like, you know, strategic quitting that that's there for you and that's going to help. But I think it's just a little, it's hard for the new grad who has so many bills to pay to say no to the first job offered, right? Um, but I think, you know, it's a challenge. My challenge to you managers out here who might be watching this and listening to this, don't lowball of these new grads, right? Don't lowball your own profession. You know, when I was a director, I paid uh, new grads in the range of 37 to 40 an hour, you know, in, a, in the CCRC setting. I think that's more than fair. And I think that, you know, it doesn't take experience to grow value in doing the same thing by the hour. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense, right? So I guess that's that. Hope you enjoyed the blab. I'm still getting used to this uh, interface, but I, I kind of like it. Uh, I know there's future requests for, you know, interview tips, how to negotiate up your salary, uh, get a pay bump, that kind of stuff. But I'm, I'm repurposing some material, so please be patient. Uh, and otherwise, I'll see you on Twitter, Facebook, and whatever else. So, till next time.